right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to welcome Drexwell Seymour from Turks and Caicos, our first guest from Turks and Caicos in the Caribbean. How are you doing, Drexwell? I'm I'm well. Um, I'm glad to be here today, and thank you for the opportunity to be on on your show. Absolutely, and Drexel is the author of "Rise Up and Take Your Position," and uh, and what we're going to talk about today is finding your purpose. and And I think this is a great subject, Drexel, because I've had so many conversations with people, and purpose comes up all the time about the need to find purpose and how purpose is really is the is the fundamental or foundation of of people's success in life, whether in business or or in their personal life. But finding how to find your purpose, that's something that I think a lot of people struggle with. So I'm very interested in, in getting in getting your feedback because I think people recognize today that having a purpose is a good thing. Yes. But they but they just don't always know how to find that purpose. Okay. Okay. That is true. Well, first of all, I believe that everybody um, has a purpose. Um, some people may not recognize that, but everybody has a purpose. And and they do not have to look far for their purpose. Their purpose is, is right within them. It's, w- it's within their reach. I believe everything they have that they need to do to fulfill their purpose is within, their, is within them in themselves. And one way to identify a purpose is that there is something that you like, there's something that you are passionate about, there's something that you go to bed every night thinking about or waking up thinking about it. That's a that's a, a sign that you are onto something, that that's your that's your purpose. Um, and, and I think that's one of the signals right there. Um, something that you enjoy doing um, and, and something you just can't stop thinking about. I think that's the first step in identifying um, your purpose. Yeah, that's that's interesting because uh, I guess a lot of people think, well, it'd be nice. It'd be nice to be able to focus on things that we like. It would nice to be. It'd be nice to be able to put them um, center stage in our lives. But I've got all this other stuff. Yeah, I've got all these other responsibilities and all of that. So I just kind of push that to the side. So, so how do you go about actually making you know not just identifying your purpose, but starting to make it work for you? You know, that's that's a good question because um, sometimes, like you say, people put things aside. But the thing that you put aside may be the same thing that could transform your life. Um, sometimes the things you like, you may look at and say, I'm not going to make any money from it. Um, it's not going to bring me any return. I mean, of course, you know, everybody wants to make money, but that should not be the priority. And everybody should be doing what they like. Too many of us are in jobs. We are in, in in positions that we do not like. So the first thing we need to do is is to invest in the things we like and take it from there. Once you take it from there, you will find that you'll be you will get rewards in the form of compensation, rewards in also making a difference in the lives of of people. And I think that's what we need to do. We just need to find a balance. We need to take the risk and pursue the things that that we like. It may take, I mean, um, day by day for some people because you have a full-time job, but you mm-hmm. should start because if you keep procrastinating, um, keep putting things off, you'll never start. So you should start right now, even if it means staying up in the evenings or, or doing a second job to, and then I think you, you should still do it because it's a start. Yeah, no, I, I think that's I think that's really good advice um, because I think we also need to, and like I said, it, I think it's great advice to maybe start doing something on the side or whatever to to make sure that that is actually something that we we really want to do yeah. before we you know yeah. invest or go headlong into it um, because what you initially think is your purpose and what becomes your purpose it, it may be a journey as opposed to just identifying it immediately, right? That is true because you know I'm a I'm a certified public accountant, so mm-hmm. I I love accounting. That was my favorite of subject in high school, and I thought you know that was my purpose for the past you mm-hmm. know 
um, 30 something years, I've been practicing accounting thinking that is my path. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. And then I discovered that's not what, that's not my purpose. It's part of my journey, but it's not my purpose. I finally found my purpose, which is to influence, to encourage, inspire people. And I do that through my YouTube. I do that through my writings. And I now mm-hmm. I did it through through my book. And and uh, in, in your in your book, it's um it, yeah, just looking at it here, it's quite interesting. Um, some of the some of the things. Uh, you start off. You start off by saying finding faith enough to fill your purpose. So, what, what, what when you what do you mean finding faith enough? Um, what what do you mean by that? The thing with fulfilling a purpose is that sometimes the things that you want to do may seem impossible to achieve, mm-hmm. and in order to to reach your destination, you have to have faith uh, because you may end up, you know meeting so many, not Anna, you will meet obstacles. You will encounter obstacles in your life, but you have to have faith so that you can reach your purpose. And so that's what I mean. You, you, you have to find faith enough to reach a purpose because in order to reach a purpose, you need to have, you need to have faith. Yeah. And it's, and it's interesting, like the faith, because sometimes that feels like all you have, right? When things aren't, aren't going your direction immediately uh, and and being able to you know f- to be able to have that faith and focus on putting one foot in front of the other because at the end of the day every journey is one foot in front of the other and i think sometimes we True. maybe we'll say oh this is my purpose this is what i want to do and it's it's big and it's grand which is fine which is great but then you get paralyzed because it seems so far away Mm-hmm. Uh, and that you have to draw back and say, okay, I need to put, I need the next best step towards it. Mm-hmm. That is true. But um, the thing, the key thing is we must persevere. We we cannot, we cannot mm-hmm. give up. If you know for sure, once you find your purpose, you know for sure that's your purpose. And you realize it's being delayed, uh, taking a very long time to be fulfilled. That's okay. Um, you, you just can't give up because you're going to go take the next thing and then you still have not fulfilled what you have done, what you what you were called to be here on this earth. And so whatever it is, you just need to you just have, need to keep at it, keep pushing it, keep keep doing it. Don't don't give up and, and don't settle for less. Just 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 keep pursuing it. And eventually, I'm telling you, it, you it will come to light. Mm-hmm. And I guess the other thing, and I think this is something that you focus on in your book as well, is, I mean, you mentioned faith. Uh, the other part, I mean, is faith, obviously, is belief, is that you can do it. Because there's plenty, of, we're very good at finding evidence for ourselves to show, to prove that we can't do something. We're fantastic at that. We can find tons of reasons why we can't do something. Um, it's much harder to find the reasons why you can do something. And I think that's the important part. And you, you have a whole chapter around, uh, around can do. Yes. Yes, because a lot of times we focus too much on the negativity. Um, because in our minds, um, you, keep, you keep hearing you can't do it. You can't do it. You know? And so mm-hmm. we, and as a result, you get a lot of doubts. In order to remove these doubts, you need to believe that you can do it. Because in, in our minds, in this world that we face, it's always going to be positive. It's always going to be negative. And sometimes the negative seems to outweigh the positive. And because of that, you, you're not going to um, pursue the things that you're supposed to do if you weigh so much on the negative. So we have to recognize there will be two, two different mindsets, one positive, one negative, or someone say one good, one evil. Mm-hmm. Always always believe that you could do it and that's the key you have to believe yeah. that you, can, you cannot pay attention to the negativity the negativity should yeah, try I, to, to what you want to do sorry about that yeah no good and and uh, i mean obviously we live in a very strange world today we where do. you're getting a lot of mixed messages um through all the various media that that we're subjected to and i think sometimes because I mean, take for instance, like you know, social media or something. People see all these what they think are all these very successful people or people who have wonderful lives and are great. And instead of instead of uplifting you, 
it tends to push you down and you start to feel, wow, well, listen, those people are really good. They they're really talented. They're very successful. I'm not. So one of the other things you mentioned here is about, you know, is finding your talent. And I think that's where some people really, really struggle is because I think we're very good also at kind of putting ourselves down, if you like, sort of saying, well, I'm not very good at that. I'm no, I'll am i never be able to do that. You know, they're much better than me. But what we're using as evidence is not really evidence, right? Uh, it's, right. It's, it's our perceptions of ourselves and then our perceptions of other people. Right. And the thing too, I mean, sometimes we just look at the end products but if you were to really um, investigate the stories of those people that that you are uh, that you look up to or that you're following, you would realize that they too and and um, had had failures. They too and that these things that they have now didn't happen overnight. They didn't achieve it overnight. But sometimes people portray to the world that you know, hey, this is so easy. The success happened overnight. But they had talent, and they and what they did, they cultivated their talent. And, and was able to invest in their talent. And then they're able to get the end product, which they now sharing with the world. Yeah, I, I, I was, uh... I always use as an example. I always go back to there's a there was a uh, there's a band in 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 the UK in the 80s 90s pulp, and when they had their first big hit, mm -hmm. um, you know the media was saying like, oh yeah, pulp overnight success. And oh. the you know the lead singer said, "Yeah, we're an overnight success. It only took us ten years to be an uh -huh. overnight success." <laughs> and I, I think like to that. your to, yeah to your point is I think people look at the outcomes. They say, "Oh, look, Drag yeah. Show is so successful," but they don't look at and they think, "Wow, he came out of nowhere, overnight success." And then you think, "No, if you look beyond it, there's there's a lot that's gone into that, and it's it's a long journey." And I think that's part of the problem is we have become we've been convinced that there are shortcuts to everything when there is. Yes. Yes. And, and, you know, the world that we live in is, is, is so much full of in, instant um, stuff, right? Instant results or the microwave mm -hmm. world. And that's, that's what we face with. Um, we, and the thing is even some of the ads that people um, play and produce, it, it gives you the impression that things can be done instantly. Of course, there's some things that can be done mm -hmm. instantly, but the truth is everything takes a process, everything. And, and that's what we need to realize that in fulfilling your purpose in cultivating your talent, it will take some time. And, and I don't know, time to you may be different time to me, but time is a key factor and you have to have patience until you're able to complete your 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 purpose. Yeah, no, I agree with you because without patience, uh, you're you you're going to bounce from one thing to another because you're going to try one thing and it's not going to work immediately. So you're going to yeah. bounce to the next and the next. Uh, but one of the interesting things is, um, as as you also mentioned in your book, is how much how much failure plays in in finding in finding your true purpose, or how much failure is an opportunity. It maybe it's a signpost, it's a guide, it's something helping you, uh, and you and sometimes things that you thought were failures, you look back on them and you realize that they were actually your greatest learning moments that helped propel you forward. Absolutely, and and that's a that's a big takeaway that I want people to to realize. Um, the moment you encounter failures, you feel like okay, that's it. That's the end of the, your, 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 your goal. You have not achieved the goal. But if we were to, to review stories of individuals in their lives, we'll see all of these successful people, almost every successful person, encounter failure. Failure is, I know we use the word failure, but failure is an opportunity. Everything that you fail in, you can learn from it. What, what are the learning things? What are the takeaways? from this fail opportunity, the fail business, fail marriage. What did I learn from this? And, and if sometimes you don't fail, um, you might never be successful because mm -hmm. you don't know what to do. But the failure allows you to not repeat the same mistakes you make. I hope you wouldn't repeat the same mistakes. But these are it's, it's a learning tool for, 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 for you. So it's an opportunity. Yeah, no, I, 
100%. And to your point is, uh, there's a friend of mine who had this, a friend of his who was a very, very successful person. And in his office, he had two things on the wall. He had his Harvard MBA hmm. and he had his first Chapter 11 uh, bankruptcy hmm. uh, uh, framed on the wall. And my friend asked him, said, which of these two did you learn most from? Mm. And he pointed immediately to the chapter 11, to the bankruptcy, not the Harvard MBA. The bankruptcy was what taught him the most. Yes, I believe that. I, I, I believe that. There's a lot of things you taught in school. It's not the same thing that you get in the real world. And when you encounter all these stresses for life and all these failures, that's when you really learn. You know, Of course, you get knowledge and stuff while you're in university. But the actual experience from mm -hmm. failures... Is even is even great now of course nobody sets themselves up to fail nobody wants to fail but but failure will take place in our lives and, and we learn from it and then what do you say to somebody who who says to you yeah drex well that's this all sounds great but you know i i don't have a purpose you know we, we not everybody has a purpose it's it's great that you do but i don't really what what do you what would you say to somebody who who says well i i, I don't really have a purpose you know, a lot of people, a lot of people think they don't have any purpose. I know I, for many years, I thought I didn't have any purpose either. But over years, I discovered that when we all came into this world, we, we are not a mistake. That we didn't just come into this world just to be in this world. Everybody in this world is here for a purpose. Nobody is a mistake. And, and, and you need, you need to recognize that the problem is a lot of us are comparing ourselves to other people. A lot of us um, don't have the patience, and a lot of us think very little of our, little of themselves, and so they think that they have no purpose. But everybody has a purpose, and that's why I wrote the book. That's why I have these shows because I'm one of those individuals who thought I didn't have a purpose, and now I know. Four years ago, I discovered that I have a purpose, and if I have a purpose, you have a purpose. Everybody has a purpose. You have to be. You have to know that. You know, you didn't come to this world. To, to be a failure. You didn't come to this world as a mistake. You came into this world to do something. You were created for a purpose. I honestly believe that. Yeah. So when you, when you, um, where you discovered your purpose, what changed in your life? I mean, how did your life change once you figured out your purpose? And I know uncovering your purpose was was probably a process and took a while. But once you'd figured out what your purpose was and you started down that road, what, what difference did it make to your lives and the lives of those around you? I tell you one, one major difference, it built my confidence level. I, I lack confidence um, prior to finding my purpose. I, so that's the first thing. I, and once I became confident in myself, I was able to know within myself that whatever I put my head to do something that it, it will it will happen. So my confidence level went up probably more than 200 percent. And because my confidence level went up, I was able to help others as well. And and, and the second thing, um, it, it allows me to take risks. I don't want to because of my confidence level, I was able to take risk. I think that's another important thing that we need to do. We need to be able to to um, to take risk. We're afraid to take risks because we, we don't want to fail. We don't want people to think the worst of us if we do fail. And so that those are the two things for me. I mean, it built my confidence level. I was able to take the risk. And then I was able to help other people because I believe that people are in this world not just to help themselves, to help others. And once you realize what your purpose is, and once you realize that you should not be self-centered, you're able to help other people to to move them to a higher level and i think that's what that's what we all should be doing how can we help other people to become better than what they were before and i think the and i think an interesting thing there too draxwell is um, you mentioned that you you know grew in confidence you're able to take risks and i think sometimes people who stay put who don't find their purpose who don't get their confidence don't take risks think that they're not taking risks but to be honest if you're if you're if you don't know your own purpose or where you're going you're basically you're taking the risk of just letting life happen to you and who knows what that's going to be that is that is a good point you know i never thought about that but you're absolutely <laughs> right 
You're absolutely <laughs> right. You're still taking the risk by not even pursuing what you're supposed to be doing. That is true. I yeah, like that. I was, I was, I was, uh, I was call it like you sort of outsourcing, outsourcing your future to fate, yeah, <laughs> which I not like fate to fate, yeah. <laughs> because yeah, like that. that's a big difference. Well, yeah. this, uh, Drexwell, this is this has been really interesting. Um, all of Drexwell's information will be below this video. But before we go, Drexwell, please do tell our audience a little bit more about you and what you do. Sure. Well, thanks again, um, um, John. I appreciate this opportunity. So I'm a certified public accountant. Um, I've been one since 1992, and I established my accounting firm in 2013 right here in the beautiful Turks and Caicos Islands. I also do property management, where I manage um, private villas here on, on the Grace Bay Beach here in the Turks and Caicos. And of course, I'm a father. I'm married, and we have five children, uh, one daughter, four boys. But Honestly, the, the my most favorite thing I do is writing. I it's like a form of therapy for me. So every week I I write two articles. Um, it's on it's posted on my website, www.draxwellsimo.com, and I also have a YouTube channel where I have inspirational stories. Um, every week there's a new release. I I don't do seasons. For the past mm -hmm. um, three years, you could find a video every week on on my YouTube channel. And then I also host um, financially um, speaking show on on the local um, radio station, and that's that's every Tuesday. But I will tell you this before I end that yeah. for more than forty five years, yeah, forty five, forty six years, I suffered from inferiority complex. I felt um, unworthy. I felt insignificant. I was very shy. I I was concerned about what people say about me. I try to live my life to please people. And there were many times I think, um, why why I came to this world? What's my point of being here? What's my purpose? For many years, I I, I felt it was not worth living. Mm -hmm. And today, I am pleased to to tell everyone that I have transformed. I now know that I'm not a mistake. I now know that I'm a purpose person. And so, what I do now is to go around, spread the word, to encourage people, to inspire people. So they could rise up and take their position the same way I did four years ago when I discovered my purpose. Yeah, that's fantastic, uh, Director. That's so in, so inspiring uh, because you. I think sometimes people, I, I think I think sometimes people underestimate the journeys they've come on. Right? You know, your life. If you take a look back and really go, "Wow, look at," maybe it's just I've survived. Maybe it's you've just survived, and that that alone is a fantastic achievement. And I think some, sometimes I think under people underestimate their own capabilities and what they've done. And sometimes when you shine a light and say, let's look at your journey and suddenly they go, oh, I never looked at it that way. Yes. And and so, uh, so yeah, it was great. Great. Thank you very much. Drexel. What a fantastic story. Great insight. Thank you. The book is, the book is called rise up and take your position. Don't give up find your gift and cultivate it. And as I said, all of Drexel's information will be below this video. So go check out uh, the articles he writes, go check out the, the videos and, uh, you know, and I encourage you to, and, and if you're, if you're struggling with where you are today, then follow Drexel's, uh, uh, follow Drexel and his example and go find your purpose. Thank you. All right. Listen, thanks again, Draxwell. Thank well, you thank for you, watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.